Hi, I'm Greg, your car angel. In this video, I'll be doing another extended mileage car review, this time on a BMW 3 Series, the E46. In this video, I'll be showing you why you should not be buying a used BMW. Maybe you're one of the people that think that BMW is God's gift to the automotive world. And if you are one of those people, then maybe this is not the video for you. But this video is made for people who really want real world truth about these cars and how much they are to maintain as a used car. The fourth generation E46 was introduced in 1999 and ran through 2006. And it's widely considered a BMW success story. However, there were lots of problems over time that developed which brought this car from what was first known as a great car with incredible engineering prowessness to now sort of a sloppy engineered second rate car to buy used. Now to begin with, I'm just gonna start with the engine and get right to it. And you'll see uh, right away that this, this is a typical problem of BMW, see, that uh, always comes out. The emblem here, it's either highly faded or it just comes off. I, I don't know. You see that a lot. Now, this is the 2.5 liter engine. Generally, this is a well-designed engine. It's aluminum block. But the problem is that there was catastrophic overheating problems in this car due to many things. The first and primary thing is this expansion tank. It uh, was prone to cracking. I guess the plastic is a little bit inferior on this. There's a lot of plasticky parts all, all along the cooling system, the clips, the hoses, the, the expansion tank itself. There's other things in here that were also a problem. Uh, the water pump had a uh, bearing failure. And if that uh, occurred, you'd also have overheating problems. So overheating is probably the number one problem that this engine had. Another problem that you often see in a BMW uh, 2.5, and I see this in a lot of German cars, is that the, the ATF uh, fluid in here just leaks. I don't know why they couldn't design this to not leak, but here it is after I cleaned it up. But here it is before I cleaned it up, and you'll see that there's just oil everywhere. So this is just a problem that you'll see oil dumping down, and that goes right down into the alternator and that can cause all kinds of problems. So if you're gonna override my recommendation and go ahead and purchase an E46, one of the critical things that you wanna make sure of is that the prior owner has completely gone through and replaced the water pump, the thermostat, the expansion tank. You want to make sure all of these things were done because this is the number one problem on this car. Another problem was the tail lamp wiring. The harness was poorly grounded and it could lead to overheating and this was enough of a problem that obviously a lot of people have. And it's not a huge fix, but if you're not gonna fix it yourself, you're gonna be going to the dealer and then that's a huge fix. And that's the problem with this car is that everything about it is proprietary tooling, proprietary knowledge, just about everything you're gonna to have to have done at a dealership. and unless you're going to be fixing it yourself then you're going to be spending an arm and a leg to get this thing taken care of. Okay now I'm going to go inside the car and this is really where the trouble gets bad. Okay so this car has 118,000 miles on it. Not a whole lot of miles. I've done a lot of reviews on other cars and you know they're in great shape at this age. But I'm just going to start from the beginning, from the front, and work my way back. Because there's so many problems with this car. Starting with the A-pillar. You see this? Terrible, terrible job. This is just coming right off. If you go on up there, you can see it's coming off there. And then you get this, this whatever. It's just the glue is failing on that. I take it. Okay. And then it's the same thing on that side. You know, just, I, I guess they just didn't figure out how to make that stuff stick. 
Okay, now going on to the wood grain uh, dashboard, you can see that that's all cracked up. You see this a lot in uh, European cars. I'm not sure why they do that. You never see that in Japanese models. And then I'm going to go down here to the center console. This is something I see all the time in BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, and it's this material that they use that it's like a rubber paint but it's not quite paint and it just peels off like this and it's just soft terrible terrible uh, finish on whatever that is here on the center console again you have very poor finishes uh, on the plastic it, it just like I mean if you look at that all I do is just take my fingernail and it just comes off of there. I mean, that should not be happening. I mean, what I would do is I would just take this whole freaking thing out and refinish it myself. But hey, shouldn't have to do that to begin with. Next thing. Okay. This is an ashtray. You'd think the Germans would figure out how to make an ashtray last longer than that. But they didn't. I mean, where they have the highest per capita smoking over there, and you think that at minimum they'd figure that out. I guess this is a part that the previous owner was keeping so that uh, Hans can take care of it later. Coming up to the sun visors, they don't even get spared. There's cracking starting to happen right there. And just to show you that, that you have the same thing over here, right? That just should not be happening. Um, again, the materials on this car, the plastic is just very inferior. And don't even get me started on the window regulators. I mean, the windows in these cars have massive problems. They're using really cheap pulleys and cables break all the time. In fact, I look back in the history, this window here has already had two replacement regulators. Uh, I think they cost around $700 a piece. And then this window regulator broke just recently, right? And the reason that there's a sweater stuck in there was because the owner couldn't roll the window up and was trying to keep the hot air from coming in. So winter or summer, that always is gonna be presenting a problem. Uh, oh, and here is another one of those uh, areas where the fabric is just pulling away from the surface. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Okay, and speaking of <laughs> material, look at that. It's just all poofing out like that. And you can see on the C pillar, same thing as in the A, a pillar. Just coming right off. What a crock of crap that is. I mean, that should never, ever be happening on a car such as this. Alright. Look at that seat there. That thread is failing. You think that should be happening at 118,000 miles? I think not. Speaking of poor materials, if you look here, you'll see this is the windshield cowl. Now look at that. You think that's okay? I mean, totally, totally unacceptable. Look at that over there. I mean, you see this on virtually every BMW that you look at. Here's another thing. That is the rear view mirror and you can see that's the driver's side and you can see that water must have gotten underneath this area here making the stain now why that would happen is that another plating problem i mean do bmw engineers lack like uh, a solution on just basic plating principles i don't know it's very very confusing it's confusing because you pay a lot for a BMW, and you'd think that this car would be engineered, you know, better than a typical Toyota Corolla or even a Hyundai Elantra or a Toyota Prius. But the reality is, 
they didn't design it to last much beyond 100,000 miles. And as a crowning achievement of engineering failures, BMW managed to have a problem with the 3 Series, at least in the M3 design, which was uh, subframe cracking. This was such a problem that there's actually a class action lawsuit against BMW for that. Now I have to say, enthusiasts really love this car, and for good reason. When everything is fixed up, it's really an amazing driving machine. But it's the fixing up part that's the problem. So, the recommendation is to not buy a used BMW. Unless you have your best friend named Dieter or Hans, then it's okay. Or if you're a competent mechanic and you can do everything yourself, great. These are nice cars and they drive beautifully. They're actually the benchmark for all other cars and how they drive. In other words, all other manufacturers try to achieve the same driving feel that the BMWs have achieved. However, keep in mind that you're going to be married to a dealer otherwise and it's going to be a very expensive car for you to keep. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Piece of shit.